the Devonian, also known as the Age of Fish. But the incredible diversity of fish weren't the only interesting things about this period. This period also marks the first appearance of extensive forests that cover the land, four-legged animals making their way onto the land, and of course another major extinction to kill off most life on Earth. Right on schedule. Well, let's dive into the Devonian life, land, and death on today's episode of Down the Line. All right, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Pete, and before we get into it, I actually have an update from a YouTube commenter with a badass name titled Robot Killer. He spoke about my Cambrian Explosion episode, specifically about Phyla. I didn't give much of an explanation about uh, what they were, and Robot Killer was kind enough to help fill us in. So at the end of this episode, uh, we'll stick around for that update. And uh, also, you'll be able to hear some background noise here. It's it's like summertime, and it's you know almost 1 in the morning, but it's still really hot here, so I had the air on in the back. I hope it's not too distracting. If it is in the future, I won't use it, but with that all in mind, let's jump into it now. So the Devonian. It was a geologic period and system of the Paleozoic spanning 60 million years from the end of the Silurian at around 419 million years ago to the beginning of the Carboniferous at around 359 million years ago. It is named after Devon, England, where rocks from this period were first studied. Now let's build a picture of the land we're working with, starting with the paleography. So we had Gondwana to the south, the continent of Siberia to the north, and the early formation of the smaller continent of Euramerica, which is also called La Russia. Fucking weird-ass names. Okay, so the life at the time. There were free-sporing vascular plants that began to spread across the continents, forming forests that covered the land. By the middle of the Devonian, several groups of plants had evolved leaves and true roots, and by the end of the period, the first seed-bearing plants appeared. While plants were busy taking over the world, the ancestors of all four-limbed vertebrates, called tetrapods, began adapting to walking on land. As their strong pectoral and pelvic fins gradually evolved into legs, they began hitting the gym like two to three times a week to work out their pecs. They start building some pelvic muscle so they can walk on land confident and ready to fuck shit up. Uh, the fish see this as the perfect time to start fucking like crazy and reach some crazy diversity during this time, leading the Devonian to often be dubbed the Age of Fish. Uh, the first ammonites, species of mollusks, also appear during this time. So the late Devonian extinction, which started around 375 million years ago, severely affected marine life, killing off all placoderms and all trilobites, except for a few species of the order Pro- <laughs> Proetida. Proetida. So that fucking sucks for that life that was starting to evolve just to get snuffed out. But, you know, when you have a life like that, like a Proetida, I I don't give a shit about them. (laughs) The Devonians split into three series, also known as epochs, but I'm going to refer to them as series, just because that's kind of how we've been doing this whole, you know, show so far. Um, And those are the the early, middle, and lower Devonian series. They all have a bunch of ages, also known as stages, but I'm going to stick to calling them ages that we will get to in now. I know that's kind of confusing, but first off, the early or uh, lower Devonian series has three stages, and the first one is called the Lakovian Age. It is the first of the three faunal stages in the early Devonian series. It lasted from around 419 to 411 million years ago, with this marker fossil being the Graptolite species Monograptus uniformis. If you're a new listener, Graptolites are like these stringy X-like life forms that I believe were introduced in our Cambrian Explosion episode. And the next we have the uh, Pragian Age. It lasted from around 411 to 408 million years ago. And this period marked the uh, first appearance of the Conodont species, E. <laughs> this is good, crazy. Uh, Eonathoda silcatus. And Conodonts were a type of eel-like life form introduced in, I believe, the Ordovician episode of the podcast. So, uh, if you're also unfamiliar, this is kind of the part of the episode where I just go into these fucking super complex names and uh it's i guess like a running joke kind of just to make fun of how much i struggle to pronounce these fucking names uh next is the emsian age which lasted from around 408 to 398 million years ago and this age saw the evolution of the ammonites which i had just talked about it's a new and important cephalopod group so now we advance into the middle devonian series which has two stages so we're already halfway done So the first one is the uh, Ifelian, which was the first age of the Middle Devonian and lasted from around 398 to 392 million years ago. This age marked the first appearance of the Conodont species uh, Costatus partitus. I also think Ifelian, uh, I never found this, but I'm just assuming that it 
it like sounds kind of like a, like the Eiffel Tower. It's kind of spelt like that, so I assume that's kind of how it's pronounced, and maybe what it's based off of too. So next is the uh, Givtian Age, which lasted from around 392 to 383 million years ago. It was named after the town of Givet in France, which makes me even more you know uh, sure that the last one had to do with France too. Uh, this age is characterized by a zone which is really just a smaller subdivision of geologic time. So in the age, I guess we have zones, which is, I mean, as you know, I guess from other episodes too, you know, you start from the farthest out, like the Pale like a Paleozoic era, <clears throat> and then you get into like, you know, the Devonian period, and then the stages, and then the ages, and then the zones. It just keeps getting fucking zoomed in. But uh, these ro so the age is characterized by the zones whose rocks include the Ammonite genus. I can't even pronounce that word. Ammonite genus, main Eocerus. So, yeah, if I can chew on that. <laughs> Last but not least, we have the Upper slash Late Devonian, which has the final two stages in the Devonian period. And I am so looking forward to not having to pronounce these fucking stages and periods, which is I think gonna be a long time, just because we also have the. Uh, you know, the Jurassic Park, or Jurassic, <laughs> Jurassic Park, we also have the Jurassic, uh, you know, age with all the dinosaurs, and, you know, we have, and then the one after that, which is, I think is more like human time, but I think when, when we get to humans, it's going to be a little bit easier to understand, hopefully, probably shouldn't be, you know, I'm kind of talking on my ass right now, so I have no idea <laughs> how it's going to go, but we'll see. The first age in the uh, late Devonian stage is the Frasian Age, which lasted from around 383 to 372 million years ago. It's at this point where the first forests start taking shape on land. It's also the first appearance of the Conodont species, here we go again with this, and Cryodella rotu, <laughs> Rotun Diloba. So, and Cryodella Rotun Diloba. <laughs> Fucking A. I can't pronounce any of these. Finally, we come across the final age in the Devonian period, the Famineian Age. This age lasted from 372 to 359 million years ago. It is named after Famine, a natural region in southern Belgium. The Famin, the Famineian, oh god, I can't pronounce this either. The Famineian, the Famineian, yes, okay, age, has these two major extinction events that carry us into the Carboniferous period. The beginning of this age is marked by the Kalwasser event, and the end with a smaller but still severe extinction event called the Hangenberg event. Uh, if you've been watching in order, you should definitely start to recognize a pattern in all the closing episodes. It seems most of these episodes start with lots of death and lead to the open of another age, with a new life being built up only to be destroyed at the end of their period. It's kind of like a, like a pattern that we kind of noted. With that happy note, we are led into the Carboniferous period and the end of this episode. And before I get my, you know, thank you for watching this episode speech, I want to get to Robot Killer's update. So like I said in the beginning of this episode, I made a reference to Phyla in my Cambrian Explosion episode, and I feel like I didn't explain it as well as I would have liked. Uh, by the way, if you ever feel like I missed something or you wanted a little more detail to a subject, feel free to leave a comment or contact from wherever you're listening to, and I'll add it as an update. So read Robot Killer's comment and then give a semi-watered-down explanation for people like me who, you know, can be half-stupid when it comes to grasping basically any basic concepts. Okay, so here's Robot Killer's comment. Phyla, and this is a quote, Phyla in biology basically refers to body plan, like uh, bilateral symmetry versus radial symmetry, uh, differentiated cells versus undifferentiated cells, exoskeleton versus exoskeleton, things like that. All living things belong to a species, even early ones. It basically means a single kind of organism. Each species is also sorted into other taxonomic ranks, which are there basically as signposts to help track the evolutionary history of the species and its relationship to other life forms. Okay, I know that was kind of like a... It was kind of hard to understand, for me at least, because I, I don't have kind of a, a background in any of this stuff. I'm just kind of curious, you know? So in uh, caveman terms, this is what I got from that. And a bit of extra research on just phyla itself to make sure I had a really good grasp on it. Phylum is a rank in what is known as the phylogenetic tree or the tree of life. There's so many different species and they're all related in some ways, so to make it less confusing, biologists made this ranking system to make it more organized. To give an example, I found a nice explanation on Wikipedia, and yes, I know Wikipedia isn't a valid resource, but uh, 
I was looking for a basic example and think this was a pretty good one on foxes. So here's a quote from Wikipedia. Consider a particular species, the red fox, Volpes vulpes. The next rank above, the genus Volpes uh, canidae, which include dogs, wolves, jackals, and all foxes. The next higher rank, the order Carnivora, includes carniforms like bears, seals, weasels, skunks, raccoons, and all of these mentioned above. And feliforms, or feliforms, I don't know which one's the, one, the correct way to pronounce it, but that has uh, cats, civets, hyenas, mongooses, as one group of the hairy, warm-blooded nursing members of the class Mammalia, all the above are classified among animals with backbones in the phylum Char Char Chordata. And that's, so that's where the phylum is for foxes, and with them among all animals in the kingdom and Amelia. Finally, at the highest rank of all of these are grouped together with all other organisms possessing cell nuclei in the dom domain Eukarya. So as you can see, this taxonomic system is a good way to group how all living things can be traced back to a common ancestor. Phylum is one of the ranks on the tree of life and is just a way to chart a common ancestor for any life form. I mean, that's it for this update. I, I hope that explains it well. Uh, at least better than I probably did the original time. And I hope that uh, Robot Killer, the, the guy who kind of asked for this update or just was talking about it in general, um, I hope that that was kind of to his satisfaction. Now, on to the end of the episode and to that thank you speech. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave some feedback uh, wherever you're listening. Good or bad, as long as it's constructive criticism, I'm open to it. Or if you just want to leave a comment to start a convo with me or other listeners. I mean, I'd love to see that too. I read every comment and try to comment back to everyone. So thank you all so much and I'll talk to you in the next episode of Down the Line.